Hello and welcome to another Here's of the Storm Quick Tip. Today I want to talk about dealing with the Volsky objective, which is the protector. So, ideally, what do you want to do with the protector when you take it? Well, typically what you want to do, if you can't end the game, you want to get as much structure damage as possible because that's what the protector excels at. It does not particularly do well in hero damage. And so, if you take the first objective, which this is, typically what you want to do, you can look at the, the mid wall, and depending on how much uh, damage they can safely put on the protector, you might be able to take the whole wall, you might just take a tower, and then most of the time you'll take it top, because you want to kill this well. After that, it's kind of up to you what you want to do. But no matter what, you really want this well dead. And so, we'll pause for a second, because why you want that wall dead? Well, because the protectors, or rather the objectives, spawn in a set order. First one's always going to be middle, the second one's always going to be top, the third one's going to be bot, and the fourth one's going to be mid. And after that, it really doesn't matter because if your game's going past four, something has gone horribly wrong. So, in other words, whenever you get a protector, you want to take out the well wherever the next objective is going to spawn. So, for one, if you get protector on second objective, you want to kill bot well, so that way you're set up for third objective. The other thing is, the power of the protector does not particularly scale linearly. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, in other words, the first two protectors are not particularly great. The third protector, if you get a team fight and you have a fort down, can end the game on its own, essentially. Um, it used to be even stronger, but that's beside the point. Uh, the fourth one will almost always end the game unless you get the protector and the rest of your team is dead, and they have a lot of siege damage. Like, say it's just the two of you and the protector, and five of the enemy team are still up. Okay, well then they probably can burn down the protector in time. But at that point, you're talking like, you know, 10% per right-click on the core kind of deal. Like, it's just too hard to stop. So, okay. So, that's what you do with the protector. But what if you don't have it? What do you want to do? Well, for the first objective... Uh, you basically are 50-50 on whether or not you want to run past them and kill the enemy squad, or just keep soaking every lane and just have three people deal with Protector and hold the team back and just get every lane. If you have a double soaker, it's much easier because you can 4-1 it. So, the first Protector will rarely get more than this. At most, it gets a 4. But typically, especially in coordinated play or high-level play, you get a couple of towers... And usually the gate and a wall. Or not the gate, but the side wall and a well. There you go. Uh, later ones will usually get a fort and keep wall. And if you killed the enemy team, they can get a keep. And like I said, the third one, if fort's dead, you can get keep wall. Usually what you want to do is just kill side wall in a tower. Um, and then kill keep. And then go to core if you have uh, a full team wipe. Typically, if you get Protector and there's like 25 to 30 seconds on their death timers, which means basically you've won a fight at 99% or something similar to that, that's usually when you can look for an end with third Protector. Okay, so, if you don't have Protector, what you want to do is you want to try and kill the enemy team behind them. Especially if they have someone like a Sylvanas or something that puts out a particularly large amount of siege damage or can disable structures. And you can do this because, again, the Protector is very bad at dealing with heroes. To put it in perspective, the most damaging uh, ability towards heroes the Protector has is this laser. And so unless you get CC'd in it, you should never stand in this laser explosion. You just walk out of it. And that is the most damaging thing. The second one would be the gun, the little machine gun, if it stays on you for an extended period of time. So again, if you're moving around... Generally, they're not going to be able to focus on you enough with the machine gun to make serious damage happen. All the other abilities are essentially irrelevant. Uh, the biggest one they have for their enemy team is that the Protector E 
uh, sorry, if you're the driver, your E button will send out a pulse, and that gives armor to your fellow teammates. And so that, a lot of people I find don't even know what that does. And so that's actually really important. If you hug the protector, you can get an armor boost, and that may let you live in situations that are going to be close. So again, the main thing you want to do is if you have high damage siege heroes, you can go after the protector directly, especially the first two, which you'll burn it down relatively quickly. We did not have that kind of comp with this. So what happens is we want to look for people uh, outside of the protector or look to engage once the protector dies. Unfortunately, they kind of scout us out here. But the reason we follow along for so long is when it pops, we wanted to look for and engage immediately after. But they did a good job of keeping it over here and running away. And you'll see someone even got out of the protector before it ended. And the higher up you go, the more common that is. Because when there's like 10 seconds left on the protector, especially if you've already used laser or you're retreating, there's really no reason to be in the protector. So that's all for today. I hope this helps you on Vosky Foundry. Have a good day.